Playing The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is an exercise in time travel. Ahead of the Switch remake, I replayed a 2011 version of a 1998 version of the 1993 original. I found the famously inscrutable handheld top-down Zelda as pleasingly difficult to scrute as ever. Its hazy, Twin Peaks-inspired story and compact, twisting overworld were undimmed by time, but its dungeons were slightly lacking by comparison with what came after. But just like a good time travel yarn, the 2019 edition is out to correct mistakes and make more perfect what's come before. I'm happy to say that, having finished this latest version of the story, all my praise for Link's Awakening remains intact, and my reservations have practically disappeared. This is a remake in the true sense. The story and every event in it is completely intact. It's an offbeat tale told by turns charmingly and creepily, in which Link is lost at sea and lands on the shores of Koholent Island before an owl sends him to open a giant egg perched atop a mountain. If you haven't played, this is an odd one. Koholint itself retains every feature from the original, aside from the camera shop, which has been made obsolete because we sadly don't have Game Boy printers anymore. Even in that case, the camera shop area has been reopened as the new and slightly disappointing Chamber Dungeons location, where you can create your own dungeons out of pieces of the ones you've played, but bafflingly only share them through Amiibo. Otherwise, it's a remarkable work of imitation. The structure of the world remains precisely the same, down to individual squares of grass. At points, this feels as much like digital tourism as it does a return to an old adventure. The true development work has gone into altering the fabric of what makes up those familiar landmarks, and the most immediately obvious change is the new graphical style. Famously, Awakening adds to its dreamlike storyline by pilfering from across the Nintendo Extended Universe. As Link, you stomp Goombas, get eaten by Kirby, and take a chain chomp for a walk. It's fitting, then, that its new look feels drawn from other non-Zelda games, particularly Animal Crossing and Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. The chunky, 8-bit pixels of old have become a tilt-shifted toy town, with swathes of blur painted onto the top and bottom of the screen, to make Koholint's dinky architecture and plasticky flora pop out from the screen. Some might have worried that the stark charm of the original would be lost in the visual transplant, but it's simply a new kind of charm now, a style that complements the story by feeling both incredibly cute and uncannily artificial. The overworld of Koholint Island has also been turned into a single, seamless space. Where the original was forced by technical restraints into a web of scrolling single-screen areas, these have now been knitted together, making this a true miniature world. It's a lovely, modern touch for a game near obsessed with impersonating the past. The catch is that in some places it's a little too lovely for the Switch to handle. In both handheld and docked mode, frame rate regularly dips when there's a glut of moving elements on screen. This was never enough to kill my enjoyment, but it does jar when it begins happening, and it's rare to go too far in the overworld without experiencing it. The seamlessness of the overworld and its attendant performance problems don't extend to the dungeons, however. These remain knotty and often surprisingly tough sets of single-screen challenges, tying together classic Zelda item gating with what occasionally amounts to hidden object puzzles. They're also the area of most improvement in the 2019 version. The graphical upgrade turns formerly obtuse, dull bits of non-puzzling – I've rarely enjoyed wandering around looking for a cracked wall – into far more straightforward affairs, all while making the dungeon's traps, enemies and tricks more appealingly spectacular. Less obviously, there's some major quality of life work hidden underneath all of this. You can now stamp icons onto maps to remind you where to return. Locked doors don't need to be opened again every time you want to pass through them, and the compass chime used to signal unfound secrets is now far more evident when it goes off. These still aren't my favourite 2D Zelda dungeons. Looking for multiple hidden keys just isn't as fun as using my specialised equipment to think around an obstacle, but they are absolutely better than they used to be. Of that quality of life work, most gratifying is that the Game Boy's two buttons have been swapped for the Switch's full set, meaning you no longer need to drop your sword and shield to access other items, or equip a gauntlet just to pick up a pot. Link does still have to hold a feather to remember how to jump, but given how many games he can't jump in at all, I'll let him off for this one. The net result of all this work is that this take on Link's Awakening can, by comparison, be considered easier than the original. But considering the pitfalls of that original, it's an ease born out of fairness rather than straight dumbing down. More like evening the odds than rigging them. And if all of this sounds small scale, that's because it is. The overriding interest in every development decision is to preserve the original, and the secondary interest is to make the original even more appealing. You lose nothing and gain more. This, to me, is a masterclass in how to remake a game. My most succinct recommendation for the 2019 remake of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening would be this. 
A couple of weeks ago, having finished the original, I was actively hoping that this wouldn't be a shot-for-shot -shot remake. Entire decades after the fact, the dungeons felt a little underthought, the controls a bit archaic. Even slowly making your way through the overworld by way of set clues, rather than the kind of self-directed navigation we were allowed in A Link Between Worlds, felt old-fashioned. And yet, as I potter once again across Koholint, digging up its last remaining secrets to avoid turning it off again, I'm delighted to have been wrong. Link's Awakening retains the style and feel of its 1993 self, but looks and controls like a game made in 2019. In doing so, this feels like it was made in some alternate present, where games remained in 2D, puzzle-focused and strange, but tech improved to support that all. You could, I guess, call it time travel. If you want to see more of Link's Awakening, why not check out the original and the new one side by side in our graphics comparison.